What is going on? How's everybody doing tonight? Uh, we'll turn that off here in a minute. Land of Lakes checking in. Let's see. There we go. We're up, buddy. What's going on there, Mr. Arts? Happening. How's it going, sir? Dude, it's uh, it's been a busy week. Uh, you and me were out partying like rocks. Ah, uh, partying like monsters last <laughs> night, man. Yes, yes, we were. It was a so tell me. Good time. We, we went to uh, we went to the Hard Rock Cafe. We we had some dinner. And then we went over to a rock show and, uh, you know, you admitted, you said, you know, not really my type of thing, uh-huh. but, but I'm all in. Yep. So, so tell me what you thought of the rock show, Buck Cherry, Skid Row. Uh, what'd you think? Well, I definitely enjoy the Buck Cherry portion more than the Skid Row. Um, I mean, the, the entire night was good. Don't get me wrong. I didn't dislike any of it. Um, but just going by style of music and performance, I, I wasn't a huge fan of the Skid Row. It, it wasn't my type of thing. Not something I'm going to pull up on Spotify and listen to it and drive down the road. <laughs> Put it that well, way. More of, an, more of an 80s band, Buck Cherry, more of a 90s band. That might have something to do with it. But, uh, you know, they definitely, definitely killed it. And uh, we definitely killed it, too. So, uh, yeah. Speaking, hey, you know what? We're going to start right off here, buddy. I'm going to start right away. And I know I made margaritas not too long ago, maybe even last month. Uh, <laughs> but I'm going to make them again today uh, just to do it a little different. So uh, last time I made them, I made them in a glass and I just mixed them up like I would at home. Today, I'm going to make them in my shakers. So I got my 512 shakers here, uh, courtesy of our buddy, Mr. Mark Butlin who may or may not be watching tonight. Uh, and, and you know, I did cheat because it is the demo. You don't need to watch me pour in the agave, the lime juice, and the triple sec, but that's all that's in here. And then we're going to add our 512. Ooh, and you know I like my 512. You know, I didn't realize that I had stoppers on these bottles until it stopped. I was like, yeah, well, we'll just do it again. That's all that means, right? Yeah, All right, I like it. Little... <laughs> What's that? I, I always wondered why you had a stopper on the bottle. So why would you want to stop the alcohol from coming out? I, I don't know. That's it's not a restaurant. I don't know where I, I don't know where I picked those up. I think I actually picked them up to teach mocktails. Okay. All right, so I got this one loaded down with ice. Now watch this. Watch me pretend here. So I saw this on TV one time. Uh, I guess I should have gone this way. And done like this, right? And then you sit here, and here's where it goes all over the back patio. And we all know how I feel about being sticky, right? And we just want to shake this up. Now, we were talking with somebody not too long about what's the difference between shaking and stirred. We're, we're really shaking all that stuff and agitating it together. But, man, these things are getting nice and chilly. And I think it was Billy Floyd. He said, as soon as you start to get the frost building up on the outside... That's when we're good to go. And this thing, whoo, my hands are cold. You can tell I do this all the time. Oh, man. And I don't have a strainer, so we're going to do this little cheat thing like this. Maybe I'm doing it wrong. Mark, how the hell are you doing? Yeah, this way. And we're just going to pour this right in here over more ice. Man. 3FA, I know you're upset about that, man. <laughs> little left over. We're going to save that. But uh, here's to everybody out there tonight. We appreciate everybody checking in. Little uh, 512 margarita <laughs> in a big ass glass. I say, couldn't find the big glass I see, Sanaka. <laughs> oh, my God. If it's all natural, does that mean it's okay on the diet? Of course. It's natural ingredients, yeah. Nothing bad in there. Uh, I'm not supposed to have that agave. <laughs> oh, well. Oh, well. All right. Hey, let's get started, right? Uh, we're going to do we're gonna do things in a little wackadoo order. Jen, uh, anybody else out there tonight, I am going to recommend that you turn your oven on. And put it on warm so that when we get done with one part, 
you can uh, just toss it right in your oven and hold it warm. Because I'm going to do the O'Briens first. That's really going to drive me insane. We're going to do the O'Briens first. To do the O'Briens, we got to get some uh, water going because we need to blanch our potatoes. Now, I did go ahead and cut my potatoes down. Let's see if we can get a camera on this. Can we see that? Can we get that camera like that? Yep. <clears throat> so we have these dice down, and a lot of people, you know, will coarse chop their potato. We want to make sure we dice them down to approximately the same size. So they're all about the same size. And we want service size. So for uh, for today, I did I did a dice, you know. That's probably three quarter by three quarter, you know. Not really, a, not really medium, not really a, a large, but uh, you know, it's just you do you. Uh, for what we're serving tonight, I thought that would be good, and I got them soaking in water, so we got to get rid of that water. I had them soaking so they wouldn't turn brown, but we got to go ahead and get these things blanched. So get some water cranking, turn that thing on high, get it boiling. We'll control the heat once we get it up to temp. And we're just going to throw our potatoes in, and we're going to get them to fork tender. I got lots of jokes right there, Pat. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and put these in, and we're going to start bringing these up. Patrick's got that recipe up for you right there. And uh, so we're using one pound of potatoes. You know... One thing we have to emphasize about these recipes is uh, when you're looking at these, guys, remember, these are guidelines. These are guidelines. You do you. If you want something uh, a little more heavy, uh, you want to put some more peppers in there, put more peppers. Uh, if I had jalapenos, I would have put jalapenos in there in addition to uh, the green and red bells. Uh, sometimes I like to use poblano instead of the green just to add a different flavor. Uh, guidelines. Make sure you utilize uh, what you like, the flavors you like. We're making the reggae, the traditional, the way, the way the schools would teach us so that you can then take that and make it your own. Make it your own. Something else, you know, we talk about mise en place all the time. Have everything already measured out, ready to go. So that you're all set. Make sure you have your bottles of voodoo ready. And no matter how skilled you are, keep that recipe handy. Uh, we have them for every every event we do. We have them out on the tables. And again, it's just that guideline piece. That's what we're that's what we're doing. We're trying to get you guys these basics so you can go out and start to play. Um, uh, Patrick bought me a book. Uh, on walk cookery because uh, we're going to be doing some walk cookery this weekend. And uh, he bought me a book. What, what was the title of that book? It's just walk, wow. isn't it? Just, just walk, yeah. <laughs> yep. And um, you know, it has it has one line in there that we tried we try to to live our lives by in the classroom and wherever we're at. Technique is more superior than recipe. So you have to understand the technique before you can even begin to understand the recipe. So uh, make sure you you understand that. We're giving you the basics. We want to talk about the technique. We want to talk about Blanche. We want to talk about the importance of it. We're going to flip the pot right around and go to, go to a fry. Um, let's see what Jen's saying. I messed with last month's sauce used half and half instead of cream and served over gnocchi. Uh, Jen, I don't use heavy cream uh, in anything other than, I think, my Bear Blancs, or, of course, if we're making whipped cream or, or something that requires that much fat. Um, if I have the choice, I always use half and half, and quite honestly, it's because I go through so much half and half in my house and my coffee that it's just easier for me to only keep one jug in the house we don't keep milk we don't keep heavy cream half and half is it no we don't put half and half on our cereal so although fruity pebbles that might be super yummy yeah <laughs> what do you think pat what you know good what's new 
Uh, not a whole lot, really. Just uh, another beautiful day at work. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I felt like there was sarcasm in that sentence. <laughs> no, not at all. It was a good day. No, it was a good day. Every day, as Ed would say, I'm north of the daisies. That means it's a good day. <laughs> I, I will say the two 50-year-olds, 50-plus, last night, uh, we won't count Spider because he lives like a 35-year-old. Um, <laughs> Ed leans up to me halfway through the show and goes, okay, my, my, my feet are numb. Whenever you're ready to go, I'm ready to go. <laughs> and I was like, Ed, they only have five songs left. I looked up the set list. So both of us complaining out about our bodies in pain. <laughs> and then then he got fucking me so old, I had to look up the set list to see if I could endure that much time. <laughs> but uh, I'm glad I did because, man, I just I thought Skid Row killed it last night. Mm-hmm. Although Buck Cherry just – Buck Cherry puts a smile on my face. Yeah, Skid Row – Man, they're headbanging music. <laughs> and uh, you're right, Jen. We had a blast. They are. I got to say, though, I think I think uh, my favorite part of last night was uh, seeing all the alum that work at the Hard Rock. You know, we ha- I think we have a, about, who did we work? I think we have seven people that work down there right now. And we saw three of them last night. And... Uh, it was just so nice to see him and know that they're doing so amazingly well and uh, that they have the opportunities they're given down there. And they were happy to see us. So we did something right. <laughs> <laughs> None of them ran and tried to hide and said, no, I'm not here today. <laughs> uh, John D. John D even bought me dessert, man. Yeah. But I'm glad she's doing well. I'm glad she's doing well. Absolutely. If you get a chance, get down there. And check them out. Uh, tell them Voodoo and Pat sent you. They might charge you extra. But uh, <laughs> riddle me this, Batman. How do we get a $250 bill eating hamburgers? Um, that's actually a good question. I mean, we didn't have that many drinks. I think we all know the answer to that. <laughs> and we got a discount. <laughs> and we got it. And we got a twenty-five percent employee discount. <laughs> Wowzers! That's why yeah. I was glad I was on vacation today. Yeah. All right. Our water's getting to temp. While this is coming to temp, I want to remind everybody. And I know, I know, only a couple of patreons are in the room tonight. It's because we're on an off night. Thanks for those of you who are in tonight. We normally do this on a Tuesday. Tonight's Wednesday, uh, obviously, uh, and that's because last night Pat and I were at the uh, the uh, concert down at the Hard Rock. We were celebrating the volunteers of uh, the foundation. We took them all to dinner. We took them all to uh, all to the Rock Show. Kind of a tradition that we started last year. We saw Slash. This year we saw Buck Terry Skid Row. Who knows who it'll be next year, but. Uh, it's just a great way to celebrate and enjoy each other's company. But tonight, uh, back to Patreon, we're doing holidays, all things holidays. And so, you know, we're doing this so that hopefully you can utilize these recipes for your brunch next uh, next couple weeks, whether it's Easter or in a couple months, uh, Mother's Day. And uh, that's why we're doing the, the holidays with the Benedicts. And then we're ultimately going to end the night with a, a little elevated dish um, using the same ingredients so that we can show you how to do another item that you could serve for Easter as well. I'm going to do a real quick black and mahi-mahi uh, with all the same stuff. So uh, don't forget, you can always go back and watch the old episodes in the in the group or, uh, you know, shoot us. Shoot us a, an email if you missed it. We'll definitely, uh, we could send you a direct copy, I guess. But it is in the Booties Facebook group. It kind of lives there. So, uh, and let everybody know if you had a good time. Let them know if they missed it. They can go back and see all the past ones as well. And we'll see what happens. I think next week, you know, I was going to do, I keep pausing because I get that that cool breeze of, 
of the feel of rain. And uh, if it rains, I'm we're kind of in trouble. You actually, if it rains, you guys are going to get the show of a lifetime. Um, <laughs> so, so uh, what's that? So I think you should be good in terms of rain. Yeah, I think so too. Um, next month we're going to do uh, some more dishes for Mother's Day, and then we'll we'll start getting into some of our beef dishes and uh, summertime dishes. And it's just going to keep getting better and better as we go. Uh, Jen, are you cooking along tonight with us? I'm just curious. And uh, if so, are you doing every recipe? I'm going to grab my paper towels real quick. I left them on the other side of the room. Wow. All right. So as our potatoes are blanching, I want to get a place ready for them. I'm just going to use this bowl right here. But I'm going to put a paper towel in there. I want them to kind of dry off because I don't want to drop them in the fryer wet. That will just flat spatter everywhere. Um, and then watch how quick we turn the same pan around to deep fry. And not cooking. I bought all the ingredients except for the tequila. And I'm going to make it for cream and ash this Friday night or Saturday morning. That's awesome. Um, I don't know. You're out. I th did you move? You're not in New Tampa anymore. Did you move to? You're out with Kareem now, and I'm guessing that's somewhere out in. Man, you're gonna have to Google where to find five one two, because I'm actually making Jen. I'm making the margarita hollandaise tonight instead of the traditional hollandaise. So house won't be done for sixty days. Wow. That's all right. When it's done, you're going to have nice new quarters and live in there with, with the family. That's awesome. Now, guys, when we're blanching these potatoes, something important to, to keep in mind, don't cheat. Don't cheat. If we don't get blanch them proper and don't fry them proper, we're going to have raw potato. And raw potato will give you an upset stomach. Um, it, it's a little more difficult for us to process. So we need to make sure that we cook these proper um, so that we're, we're serving the best product possible. We were uh, doing Benedict's on the Johnny B show. Uh, well, on the Mike Calta show, co-hosted by Johnny B this week because um, Calta wasn't in the studio. And uh, we took then some Benedict's down and made Benedict's for, for him, and it was really fun. Now, when you're checking these, you know, take one out, use your tongue, use your fork, put your fork into it. Don't grab it with your hand and throw it in your mouth because it's hot. Um, but you want it fork tender. And we're, we're just a couple seconds away from being there. Um, and then we're going to get ready and fry these things. And after that, potatoes are just going to fly right through. Patrick, do you ever make these out in industry, potatoes, O'Brien? Oh, yeah, all the time. All the time. So, so we, we used to do a, yeah, so we, we used to do a uh, Sunday brunch at the last restaurant I worked at. And I did a lot of that, did a lot of eggs, did some, some Benedicts. Yep. So... So when uh, when you and I were talking earlier, I told you back in the 90s, I actually worked at a walk station. And uh, I used to do potato. I learned potatoes O'Brien out of a walk because we did Sunday brunch. And that was just the station they came out of. They came out of that side of the line. So right. it's funny. I would uh, poach eggs on the walk station. And I would do potatoes O'Brien out of the walk station. And, uh, <laughs> right? And uh, just a great time. Nothing like Mother's Day doing doing potatoes O'Brien, Benedict's, all breakfast foods for 1,800 people with a fryer and a walk station. That yeah, sounds easy. <laughs> as, as Ed Carmack would say, easy peasy Japanesey. <laughs> <laughs> 
tell you, Ed Carmack's a fool. <laughs> Mark Butler, I see you in the green room there. You want to come on and talk? We'll bring you on and talk about 512. Let people know where they can find it. And uh, if you're out there and you watch this video before Friday night, Mark's going to be down at uh, the Green Iguana, the original Green Iguana on West Shore Boulevard for a 512 promo party um, from 5 to 7. Make sure you jump out there and check them out. Mark, if they say voodoo, they get free everything, right? I'm kidding. You really don't. Don't do that. <laughs> you might get thrown out. All right. So my potatoes are real close. I'm going to go ahead and pull these out. Now, remember, we are going to have residual cooking, that carryover cooking. So uh, you can keep that in mind as well if you're not going directly to the fryer. If you got a little time before you get there. Because that carryover cooking, you got to take that into account. Uh, something else you can do, uh, you can do this well in advance. Jen, you said you're making this for, for them on Friday or Saturday. You could definitely blanch and fry the potatoes in advance, but not too far because the refrigerator is going to play, play games with them. But uh, these things, oh, these are going to be groovy. I can't wait. All right, here we go. We're going to switch over. Give me two seconds. Get rid of the starchy water. Y'all didn't see that. It's a good thing you don't have any screen there. So I'm using canola to fry in, and I'm going to put just enough to cover the potatoes. This is real easy if you have a deep fryer. Um, you know, it makes life a lot easier. If we were in the house, we would be using the deep fryer rather than getting a pan on the stove. Uh, if you have a surface area thermometer, take this to about 350, 375, and then your potatoes are ready. But remember, get them dried down because they're going to spatter. And uh, we don't want that to... Uh, get all over you that would be a super no bueno uh yes you can prep this friday night i would even blanch my potatoes on friday night and then fry them the next day uh, i don't think you'll have a problem with that at all um you could do all your me's i know you see my hollandaise me's right here um i got my benny me's over here you could have everything all me's out jen that's actually best practice I don't know if you guys can hear that. That's sizzling. Um, we talk about taking the oil to the sizzle point. This isn't what we mean. Uh, what you're hearing is the starchy potato on the bottom of the pan, the water on the bottom of the pan. And uh, that's definitely not what we're talking about. I got you there, Home Slice. I know. I know. You, but you need one of these. Everybody needs one of these in their hand. <laughs> as soon as I'm done with this oil, this is going to become a lot more prevalent, let me tell you. <laughs> or now. <clears throat> you know, when you, when you make the, the margarita with the 512, that vanilla just does something. That vanilla flavor just kind of puts it right over the top, man. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely amazing. All right, let's check sizzle point. See, I'm flicking water in there. We're not hearing any sizzle whatsoever. All that noise you're hearing is from the bottom of the skillet where that starchy potato and water was. So we're going to give this just a couple more seconds. I can, I can smell the oil, which is another indicator. Now, shallow fry, okay, is it ideal? No, we want a deep fry, but, uh, you know, being that we're outside, we're going to do what we got to do here. We're going to get the potatoes in there, make sure they're covered, and let them do their thing. 
we're going to get these things golden brown. Now, by doing that blanch first, that's getting that potato nice and soft and yummy. And then doing the fry is going to crisp up that outside and give it that crunchy outside and that buttery middle. Um, it's kind of like a good French fry. A good French fry gets that first cook at about 300 degrees, uh, you know, for about five minutes or so, three to five minutes, whatever it is. You take it out and you set it down. You get that blanch to get that potato nice and soft. And then you crank the fryer up and you drop it down for the second cook so that you get that amazing crisp outside. Same concept. If you don't want to play with the oil, cut your potatoes. Uh, if I were doing it a uh, roast style, I would use roasted reds. And I might cut those roasted reds into quarters, toss them in oil, season them and throw them in the oven. Pull them out and finish them the same way we're going to finish these. And of course, you could add any herb seasoning spice that you want during that roast. Uh, I know my, my buddy, he loves rosemary. He puts rosemary with fucking everything. He would put rosemary with that oil and all over those potatoes and uh, throw them in the oven, roast them down. And uh, the, the aroma, just amazing. Uh, just uh, not, not in my bag, but all right, here we go. So we used to make potatoes O'Brien every week. I remember wanting and wanting to be on that brunch crew. Uh, when I first started brunch, I only did prep. That's all I did. I was only allowed to do prep. I came in the one day and I prepped everything for brunch, all the salads, all the sauces. Uh, man, I cut all the vegetables for the guy that ran the breakfast. I trade all the bacon so that he could come in and throw it in the oven and get all the glory, that bastard. Uh, I trade all the sausage. I cut all the potatoes for the O'Brien. Um, we had a steamer, so it was a lot easier to blanch uh, day of. I had to open all the muffins, man. I had to shuck six cases of oysters. Man, that not it crazy how that prep just stays in your head, that prep list? I had to make... <laughs> The flavored cream cheese, the flavored butters, uh, prep everything for the omelet station, for the waffle bar. And uh, the only thing I didn't do were the hot entrees. Wow. <laughs> I think I might be the reason we started buying cooked shrimp instead of uh, making our own shrimp cocktail. Different story, different day. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. You ever cooked shrimp one time, right? Uh, <laughs> Well, when you when you ever cook five hundred or yeah, like fifty pounds of it, I mean, then uh... <laughs> <laughs> let's not cloud the issue with facts. No small batch cookery, small batch cookery. But uh, you know, I remember wanting to to have that elevated roll so badly, but uh, you know, you had to do the time and and get to know the basics of everything. And, and know why we cut the potatoes why, the way we cut them. Know why we make everything. And eventually I did earn my spot up into that station. And then I was like, why the hell did I ever want this station? <laughs> because now you're dealing with speed. When I had the prep, I had 10, 12 hours to do all the prep for Sunday brunch. When I got the cook's job, I got to come in at 8 and I had to serve all that food before two o'clock and it's just yep. a totally different pace no matter how much work's done on the front end so potatoes of brian who's our extra extra patreon out there that's not commenting is that k k young's in the room out there today who else is in that room is that dane um, i mean i have it open in another tab i don't know if it's picking at mine Oh, maybe. It's probably probably figuring You're doubling out. down. Doubling down. Guy, I got to tell you, you know how good this smells? I absolutely, I haven't had uh, potatoes in Dane. Yep. We got yeah, Dane for Patrick froze. You froze for a minute. What would you say? Yeah. No, I'm, I mean, all I said, I closed mines and the, the number was still there, so. Well, now we're up to three. 
So we got Dane know. out there. Uh, okay. Who else we got out there in uh, lovely Patreon world? Uh, Dane Brevoort, Chef Dane Brevoort, he will be actually uh, competing with his high school students from Winter Springs uh, next, well, don't let me lie, sometime coming up soon at Voodoo Underground. And, uh, of course, Voodoo Underground students create their best version of a Voodoo bur- Voodoo-inspired burger. And uh, head-to-head, winner moves on. And the, the finals are going to be at the Epicurean Hotel on April the 16th. And there are only 32 seats available to enjoy that event. If, uh, if you attend, first and foremost, you'll get a voodoo burger, courtesy of the Epicurean. They're going to do their own version of a voodoo-inspired hamburger. And while you eat that burger, uh, I will tell you what I look for in a great burger. And uh, once you know what that is, once the high school teams compete, you will get to sample the burgers from them, and you'll now know what to look for because you'll have a vote in who will win the best high school burger in Florida. We used to say Tampa Bay, but now that we got uh, (laughs) badasses coming in from Winter Springs, what? Now we just got to get Dane to uh, sign up for Voodoo Bash to go against uh, Seth Edgman and Flavor. <laughs> Did we get That's a rise out of him? <laughs> Jen, are you drinking Moscato tonight? Sounds like Dane's ready. Got to get him to register. <laughs> Send him that website now. Send him the website now. <laughs> yeah, I'm, 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 told me, I'm looking for it. Give me a second here. <laughs> wait, wait. How many drinks have you had, Dane? You got to sign up sober. I don't want you to go. I don't want to say, Chef, I, I you know, I drank half a bottle. I was trying to be you. <laughs> I learned it from you. All right. Note to self. Prep potatoes in advance. <laughs> we're all having How a great time watching those potatoes cook. <laughs> What's that? I said we're all having a great time watching those potatoes cook. <laughs> hey, we're 34 minutes in. It's it's all good. Yep. It's all good. We'll still, we'll still be done on time because the other stuff's going to fly. It's getting a little chilly, though. I'm worried about the holidays. Jen's drinking Riesling tonight. Dane, hey, take a big screenshot that. Dane said he hasn't had anything to drink, and he's <laughs> signing up. <laughs> oh. Hey, uh... Just for the record, anybody watching this, we do have booties all over. Um, Dane has an event coming up this Saturday uh, in Winter Springs. It's a Mardi Gras festival of sorts, and they are charging, I want to say, $40 a ticket, Chef. Is that right? Patrick, is that right? $40 a ticket? Um, I believe it was. I had that up earlier. Um, I, mean, I was trying Maybe to share it. 45 40 or 45 Something like that. But if you're out in that area, you know, we're going to have all the information up on the Voodoo Chef Facebook page tomorrow. Yep. $45 to get you food and drink and an amazing time. Uh, our good pal Billy Floyd's going to be over there playing live. Uh, of course, you'll get to meet Dane, all his students and all their food. And uh, like I said, we'll have that up on our Facebook page tomorrow. Uh, Dane, there you go, buddy. Don't sing it. Bring it. Uh, 85 hamburgers. All you out of towners competing for the best burger in Florida. Uh, those hotel hotel rooms will be posted here shortly. You know, I just think my oil is not going to get hot enough on this, uh, 
induction cooktop here. We're going to give it just a couple more minutes and then we're going to roll. I mean, because uh, we still got to do some Hollandaise. We got to do some Benny's two ways. Oh, there they go. They're starting to change color. And uh, then we're going to blacken some Mahi a little bit here. Dane, uh, I have your package already. Your Zing will ship tomorrow. I've already confirmed uh, its availability. And uh, we're good to go. We now got four Patreons in the room tonight. Uh, we'd love if you would check in. Let us know who's out there so that we can uh, converse with you and uh, let you know what's going on. Uh, somebody backed out right the hell quick. As soon as I said that, <laughs> come out. <laughs> I ain't got time for this shit. I'll watch the replay. All right, here we go. He's got a little color on them. They're getting there. They're looking good. That mosquito. Son of a bitch. All right. You know, I, I'm so excited to make potatoes O'Brien. And then I remember I'm not allowed to eat any. So then I'm you know, disappointed again. Got to make it out of cauliflower. It, it, it's like my friend William Workman. Every Friday, he's a thousand air. <laughs> and then Saturday comes and it's like, wah, wah. <laughs> that Friday night of drinking does him in. William Workman, professional educator of an A school. All right, guys, here we go. We got our potatoes out. Now, it would be amazing if I thought ahead and brought something to pour my oil into. Not that lucky. Not that lucky. So here we go. I'm going to steal a little bit of that oil back, and we're going to get these O'Briens done. All right, Jen, this is where you'll pick up on uh, Saturday morning. We're going to condition our pan, bring it up to temp. We're going to get the oil hot, get that fat hot. Uh, if you want to use butter, you can. Uh, I do it a little backwards with my O'Brien. Don't ask me why. Uh, it's like one of those things. I, I saw a grown-ass man doing bunny ear, bunny ears tying them together, you know, to tie his shoes. I'm like, dude, what are you, like, four? And he's like, uh, it's just how I've always done it. Leave me alone. It's how I've always done my O'Briens. Leave me alone. We're going to get our fat super-duper hot. And like I said, back in the day, I used to do this on a walk station. So you got 600 degrees coming up on the bottom of that walk, and it would hit that, uh, that fat, and it would make it, like, super hot, super quick. And maybe that's why I do it this way. Maybe that's why I started with oil and I ended with butter. But no matter the reason, I still do it this way, that way today. So uh, maybe we uh, do this, Pat. Let's, what if we do this real quick? Boom, boom. All right, so we got our fat going. We're going to hit that. Sizzle point. Hear that? That's the sizzle point. Where we're going to add our onions and our peppers. And again, remember if you want to use poblano, jalapeno, habanero, whatever it is you want to use, you do you. That's the beauty of cooking. I'm not going to take these super long. I know I know. Uh, sometimes my buddies like to put the onions in first, get them down to the translucent, right on the tinge of that caramel flavor. 
I like mine to have a little bite to them and a little texture. I just want to get them up in that that stage, same as the pepper, where we're just getting a little cook on them, but they still have a little bite so that they keep a little of that raw flavor. That's how I like it. You got to do it how you like. Back in Back in the day of the walk, onions would hit first. We'd hit almost translucent, throw in the peppers. As soon as we got to that translucent stage, in go the potatoes. Uh, that leaves those peppers bright and vibrant, which is what we want. Seasoning with dust right here on the front end. Mark's watching, and he's like, yo, uh, why don't you put some 512 in there? Dude, we can't put 512 in everything. Just not the potatoes. All right, so here we go. We drop in our potatoes. Now we just get a nice little saute in here, guys. Get everything incorporated. Remember, our potatoes just came out of the fryer. So they're hot all the way through. We're really just getting these coated up, getting a nice little glisten on them. We're going to check them for seasoning. If you got to add a little more, add a little more. Dust is very forgiving, guys. Now, here you go. I add a little butter at the end. Just like we do when we're making a sauce, that garlic butter, the Voodoo Chef garlic butter, is going to bring all those same flavors to our potatoes. You don't want to overdo it. Don't ruin that crispness that you just gave those potatoes. But let's bring those flavors right on to those potatoes. And then again, check for flavor. Oh, dude. Oh, man, I ain't supposed to be eating this shit, man. That's, God, that's good. <laughs> Not too shabby right there, guys. Patrick, are we going to have to switch up Tuesdays so that you're here? <laughs> I mean, depends on what the menu is. I mean, we might have to here. I mean, I'm sitting here drink, drinking some iced tea and watching. <laughs> here, let's flip-flop cams again. Yep. So we can get a nice look at that. So there you go. That's the potatoes O'Brien. We're going to hold these. Like I said, if you, you like how I don't know the directions? <laughs> <laughs> la, da, la, da. Yes. All right. So look at that. If I had a little parsley, I'd drop that in there. And of course, if I didn't, my boss would come around and be like, put the it's all good, man. It's all good. <laughs> all right. If you have your ovens on warm, throw those potatoes in there. Keep them warm so we have them hot for dinner. Time for some food. All right. We're going straight to Benny's. A little closer here. Did you hear that? I heard something. I didn't know what it was. Man, somebody's dog is going nuts. All right. So, guys, Hollandaise is my absolute favorite sauce there is. And I get really upset talking about Hollandaise, tasting Hollandaise. And, you know, I'm very much you do you. But when it comes to hollandaise, I get I get kind of like grumpy. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, we got a buddy, my buddy Rhino. He makes it in a in a, a blender. Yeah. Power to him. Power to him. Rhino talks about. Uh, I'm sorry, Roscoe talks about making it in a mixing bowl. I know somebody else who makes it in a mixing bowl. They put a sterno underneath the mixing bowl. Uh, you know. About as far as I'll stretch from what you see tonight is instead of using a bain marie uh, or, or a water bath, a hot water bath like we're going to use tonight, and I'm going to get mine going right now. About the only difference or variance you'll see me use 
is I'll use direct flame or deep fat fryer. And uh, so tonight I'm going to set my bowl on top of my water and use that as my heat vessel. Again, about the only difference you may see me use is I'll take my bowl and I'll put it on a direct flame or I'll drop it into the oil of a deep fat fryer and that'll create the heat. A lot more danger, both ways, a lot more dangerous, um, but a lot faster than what you're going to see tonight. And that's okay. When we talk about hollandaise, uh, again, pretty traditional. Uh, the way I was taught, egg yolk, white wine, and you whisk your eggs and emulsify them and, and inflate them by adding adding air. By whisking them, we're actually incorporating air. And the wine thin them, thins them down. So as we're tempering them or bringing them up to heat, uh, the wine is going to thin it down so it doesn't curdle and turn into scrambled eggs. There's nothing worse than having hollandaise that looks like a yellow version of cottage cheese. <laughs> and we've got to be very, very weary of this. We've got to be pay attention. So what we're going to do is we're going to control that heat by having it in a double boiler here. We have the water here creating this steam, and it's coming up on the bottom of that bowl. So that means 212 degrees is going to be coming up onto that bottom of that bowl to help us with these eggs. And since I am keep doing this, notice the mise en place. It, it, it is crucial in everything we do. Don't ever shortcut your mise en place. Uh, I love watching students have their eggs here and go, they're starting to whisk their eggs and they go, oh, I, I got to get the wine. They walk away and leave their eggs on. It's like, that's why we do mise en place. Yep. So anyway, that heat's going to come up on the bottom of the bowl. This area right here where the pan touches the bowl is like danger zone 101. That side is the hottest pot, hottest part of this, this whole equation. And where it touches the bowl, that creates a problem. Watch this, Jen Rossage. So as that steam's coming up and hitting the bottom of the bowl, we got convection happening. We're transferring the heat with that, that, that air, that, that vapor. Where they touch, that's conduction. Where they touch, we're going to create a ring inside our bowl. Was I right, Jen? Was I right? Let me know I was right. Uh, mm -hmm. Science teacher. When we, when we do that, it's going to create that ring in our bowl. And that ring is going to be probably the most uh, challenging part when we get to it because that's what's going to create scrambled eggs. So we're going to whisk, emulsify our eggs, incorporate that air, and then we're going to whisk in our clarified butter. Clarified butter, we remove all the milk, solids, and water. We want only the pure fat. Not only is this make it taste amazingly great um it also increases the uh the smoke point so if you're going to be cooking with clarified butter uh you're going to increase your smoke point by about 75 degrees uh which is which is the good thing uh science words used perfectly that's because i got a lot of good science friends out there who help keep me uh i'll say talking average because i don't sound smart at all uh all right so as this is heating up, something you need to know, we're going to make our hollandaise right here. We're then going to, in turn, use this to... <laughs> Ed's my friend? No, you're my science friend. Uh, we're then going to use this water that's in here to poach our eggs to make our uh, bennies. So this should happen uh, pretty quick, especially since... Uh, once that water is to temp, we're good to go. Now, I told you I was taught eggs and wine. That's not what we're doing tonight. Well, let me finish. Once we take our eggs and wine emulsify, we add our clarified butter. We're going to season it with Worcestershire, uh, a cayenne pepper hot sauce. Um, I use Crystal. Uh, back in the day, the only thing, you know, in the 80s and 90s, it was Tabasco, Tabasco, Tabasco. Uh, you know, that was it. It was like the, the Heinz ketchup of the hot sauce world. Um, but nowadays you have so many different flavors and flavor profiles. 
Uh, I just tell you, use a cayenne pepper sauce. Please don't at me and slash me and go, Tabasco pepper's not a cayenne pepper. Shut up. Um, okay? Really? Uh, a little bit of cayenne pepper sauce, a little bit of cayenne pepper, and then salt and lemon. Salt and lemon. Not what we're doing tonight. We're going to do the margarita hollandaise version. And what that means is we're going to substitute 512 tequila for the wine. And uh, tonight I'm actually going to be substituting Voodoo Chef Red for the cayenne pepper. So, uh, again, if you're looking at your margarita hollandaise recipe, but uh, but uh, it says they're cayenne. I know you do you. That's the beauty. I'm going to do me with another hit of this margarita. Wow. Man, I might have to make two or three more of those. <laughs> All right. All right, guys. I don't know if you can see. We got a little bit of little bit of steam coming off of that. We're ready to go. I'm going to start with my egg yolks. Uh, I've already... <laughs> I set an alarm for 7.53 p.m. to remind me that I had to be here for this. <laughs> I never cease to amaze, right there, buddy. That's true. Uh, that's uh, uh, that's special. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna whisk these down, and I'm gonna add a little bit of my five one two. Uh, recipe calls for about two ounces. I'm gonna add half now, um, and and half at the end. And again, it's one of those things when you do it for as long as you have, you just kind of recognize. Uh, different things like the consistency of this i judged it more based on my experience than that recipe card so i wanted to take this down not quite to uh you know like water but watch this watch this i'm so going to hell dude uh, <laughs> More like a. I'm not even gonna do it. All right, I'm good. All right, so here, you want, you want it to look like that. All right, now we can put it over here, and we never stop motion. When I when I show this to kids, a lot of the kids they just want to keep going in the circle, going in the circle. I like to agitate and I mix it up and change it up. Uh, two things happen. I make sure and scrape all sides of the bowl. And also, my arm tends to not get as tired when I switch up, change up. You want to switch the other one, Pat? The other camera? See if I can get that up there. This is this. The questions around Hollandaise are some of my favorite questions. And they're kind of like the questions when somebody on the street goes, hey, I bet you make a good fish. Well, yeah, all right. What's your favorite fish to cook? Well, I like to cook mahi. How long do you cook it for? Are you an <laughs> idiot? What size is the fish? Are we cutting it down into plays? Are we doing the whole side? How hot's the oven? With this steam, yeah, it's 212. Does your bowl fit perfect? Are there air gaps? There's, there's no way to tell. And make this a standardized recipe unless we had a standardized pot, standardized amount of water, standardized bowl, and everything was perfect. So there's no way to answer your questions. And maybe that's why this is one of the most challenging sauces to make. So we're just going to keep whisking this. And you notice I keep going on air, on heat, off heat, on heat, off heat. If it gets too hot, these eggs are going to scramble. Don't want scrambled eggs. I don't want curds. And I don't know how close you're paying attention. This continuously is getting thicker and thicker.
and it's also increasing in volume because we're incorporating air two ways by whisking and through the evaporation of that tequila all right we're getting close i'm coming right back up there so all right we're close i was checking back here uh, i'm using an extra big bowl so you guys can see what's going on um and we're making a small batch because we're making a home batch. oh we're done and you might be saying how the hell did he know we're done <laughs> again it's just those knowing what to look for and i'm going to do my best to show you here if you want to bring that back up head on that front one yeah yeah yep, yep. i'm working it <laughs> there it is all right so if you see, you can pick this up and you have a string on your whisk. If you can draw a figure eight, and that eight maintains itself until you get back to the beginning. Now, don't be going, oh, no. You want to, you know, like you're whisking, pick up the sauce and do a figure eight. You should be able to see that eight materialize and drop back down into the sauce. And we're exactly at that point right there. And I'm super stoked. We're now going to get this on. Watch this. We're going to slide this over because that's going to be our poaching liquid. Now, while we finish our hollandaise, that'll sit there and be ready for our eggs. I got something really cool here. This little mm -hmm. orange thing underneath my bowl. This is no joke. This is this is true. It's called a stabilizer. And what it does is it holds my bowl so I don't have to, so I can whisk. Because I need to now you like that one, Pat? Yeah, I've that's, always just used a kitchen towel. <laughs> yep, kitchen towels, kitchen towels work. Um and I used to always use kitchen towels as well until I got this thing. Yeah. Once I got this thing, it's like, damn. <laughs> uh, but but it's good. It's like good for one thing, right? I mean, this is it. <laughs> this is it because it takes two hands to do this. So we're going to whisk and pour. And we have to pour at a very slow rate so that it emulsifies into the eggs uh, if you really want to get into an emulsification, uh, these two things don't normally incorporate because, but because uh, an emulsification is possible due to the lecithin in the yolks, uh, the lecithin acts as a barrier that will allow the fat to suspend within the egg yolk. So uh, if you understood that, Jen, awesome. If not, everybody else, or slow. <laughs> that's, a, that's very scientific. <laughs> <laughs> uh, true statement. That's how it works. Here we yeah. go. We got to pour nice and slow. My bowl is wet. went to a restaurant one time i said uh to the waitress do you guys do you guys make your own hollandaise yep we make it every day i said okay i'll have the eggs benedict they come out i'm like this shit is so out of a bag they come back i'm like hey is your holidays out of a bag well yeah i'm like i asked you if you made it we do we make it every day touche mm -hmm. touche lady yeah. here we go I, I, I mean the bag wasn't hot i mean someone has to heat it up <laughs> it, hey, if that's the case, uh, I make spaghettios like three, four times a month, man. <laughs> Don't judge. All right, that. so as we're adding our, our butter, remember, the clarified butter is hot. And it's going to continue to cook your eggs. So if this starts getting too hot, your eggs are going to scramble again. A real easy fix, you add a little bit 
of ice. It'll cool down your hollandaise. I am super stoked. God, I love hollandaise. All right. A little bit of Worcestershire. You don't need a whole bunch. A little bit of hot sauce. Um, it is a good, good treat if you use Smokehouse. Voodoo Chef Smokehouse has a smoky habanero flavor. It does amazing things. A little bit of Voodoo Chef Red for the uh, application we're doing tonight. And then salt, just a pinch. Uh, we would always, you know, if someone just started adding salt like I'm doing right now, I'm like, did you even taste it first? Um, most people say no. Um, how do you know how much to add? Uh, again, experience will play a big factor in that. But you always, always, always have to taste, right? Oh, dude, tonight's the night you wish you were here. Traditionally, we would add lemon, but this is a margarita hollandaise. So we're adding lime. Why well, you got two limes, big boy? Well, I'm going to make another margarita. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now here's where I would look at the consistency. And I'm going to check my flavors again once that lime's in. If I need more lime, I'll add more lime. Um, I think we're good. But I am going to add a little more tequila. And that's why I reserved that other ounce. And now I've got some super yummy hollandaise that I, I, I can't wait. We're going to set that right there. And now it's time to rock and roll. Let's see how good you are, Patrick. What's the one thing I forgot to bring out today? Um, a fork to eat with? Oh, close, close, close. <laughs> plate? A plate. <laughs> All right, so first thing we got to do, I got my water above poach. If you can see, I got I got slow boil coming off the bottom, slow bubbles, a simmer, you know, about 185 to 205. We're poaching. We want to be 165 to 185. I did that on purpose so I can pull this off. Get me a nice cast iron on here so I can toast my English muffins. All right, so we're getting hot here. We're going to take our garlic butter. going to get our English muffins right on here to toast up. Now, we're using Thomas's today because this is probably what you're going to find at the Publix. Uh, first thing Marie said when we were doing Benny's and she saw the Thomas's, she's like, uh, you got the good ones in the garage. And and I do. Every year I get Wolfman English muffins as a gift. And I keep them in the garage for when we're doing brunch or something. Keep them in the freezer. If you haven't had Wolfman's uh, English muffins, you are missing out. Go online and buy some today. The sourdough are phenomenal. Don't go get in the, oh my God, I had the cinnamon great. Seriously, nobody cares about cinnamon raisin. Uh, Jen, sorry I missed your question. If the when we're adding the butter to the egg yolks, um, because if we're clarifying our butter proper at the same time we're making this and it's sitting there, it's probably going to have a little heat to it. So because it has a little heat to it, it's going to start cooking our eggs too. 
So when you're whisking in that butter, if you feel your bowl and it's getting too hot, you're going to want to cool that down so your eggs don't scramble. So that's where you would add a little bit of ice chips into your hollandaise, but not too much because the water is going to thin it down. And we don't want to thin it down too much uh, because we want to save spot for that tequila. All right, so we've got our English muffins. Oh, good. You can see it right here. I got some Canadian bacon, traditional Benny, right? little bit of barbecue pork. Now, again, I know some of you guys out there are looking and go, wait, 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 pork wasn't on the recipe card. I know. You do you. We're warming this up, getting this ready to go. Now, Jen, I'm going to give you another tip for your Sunday brunch here. All right? Toast your muffin. And you don't even have to warm your ham or your pork. You can put it right on here. Depending on how many people you're serving, uh, you can put the poached eggs on top of here and then throw it in the oven to heat it up. You just got to be careful not to overcook your poached eggs when you go to the oven. Um, if you thought we made 1,800 eggs Benedict, the way I'm showing you here today on Sunday brunch, man, I don't know if you knew I own Disney World. I'd be happy to sell it to you because there ain't no way in hell. So there you go. We got pork. We got the traditional. And now we're going to get ready for the eggs. When we do poached egg, it is important that you have your poaching liquid. So we got our poaching liquid and we want it to be about 185, 165, 185 in that, in that range, okay? If you have an induction cooktop like here, I just set this to 180. Guys, the only way to really know is to put a thermometer in there and check it. Something else you have to have with your water is a little bit of acid. Most of the time, I would add um, a little acid to my water, and that would be vinegar. Uh, I've done, if I were making these barbecue uh, bennies, which I'm going to make for you, I might add some Jack Daniels to this poaching liquid. Tonight, we're making margaritas. We're going to add a little bit of 512 for our acid to this poaching. So we're going to let that come up to temp right there. And then we're going to get our eggs ready. If you ever go to school, go to culinary school, take your egg, crack it in a bowl, take your bowl in, let it slide in. Oh, man. The wind changed in that, that, that steam is coming right at me and uh man you can smell that 512 so uh where's my purse guys i love watching the cooking shows they have every gadget known to man when we're in the trenches on the line i mean you got a cook spoon you got a pair of tongs uh you got a side towel uh, I wish it was like you saw on Food Network, but uh, it's really not. I mean, not saying that they're unsafe, unsanitary. That's definitely not the case. But uh, when you're in an American-style restaurant where margins are so small and everything's based on volume, uh, you know, we have to minimize our tools as well. This isn't just a pair of tongs. This is also a, a food turner. It's a whisk. I mean, does multiple things. Uh, Patrick, you keep. Uh, what, what are we looking at? You, you're zoning. What, what, I'm, I'm like, what? no, it's, uh, it's a knocking on the door. <laughs> Where's he at? I hear him. <laughs> he's, he's, he's at the bottom saying, "Let me in." 
<laughs> All right. Wow. I'm going to go ahead and get my eggs in here. Don't crack on the side. Crack on a flat surface. It allows for a better opening. And we're just going to crack them right into that liquid. The acid is going to help those whites coagulate and uh, keep shape. And we want to cook these until the whites are just cooked and those yellows bleed. And Jen, Kareem is not eating eggs Benedict if they don't run. He's eating an egg sandwich. What's up? What's up, EFA? <laughs> How you doing tonight, buddy? Good. Good? That's everyone's favorite arts right there. You wish you had some eggs, Benedict? <laughs> All right, so here we go, guys. So back over to this plate. I've got a little bit of smokehouse, and I'm just going to drizzle a little across this, right across this barbecue pork. Uh, oh man, you could you could make bennies out of anything. Uh, salmon, a nice salmon benny. Oh, we're doing the barbecue tonight, and we're doing the barbecue because we had barbecue on Saturday night uh, with with some of my old school buddies, and I just. Hell, let's put it on some bennies and have it for dinner tonight. And it's going to be super yummy. These things are uh, tightening up here. We, uh, another, uh, Jen, that's a great question. No squirrel the water. And I was just getting ready to tell you about how we used to make these in industry. So, uh, I have a tub here, a plastic tub that I'm using to put all my dirties in. So in industry, I have a tub like that. That's, uh, I think it's 18 by, by 24 or something like that. Um, it, it's, it's large and it's about that deep. And the first thing I would do when I showed up to work is I would fill that halfway up with ice and then fill it with water, creating an ice bath, ice, cold and i would do exactly what you see me doing here i would take the eggs i would put a pot on the stove add water bring it to a simmer add vinegar and in that pot that was about this big i would drop 15 eggs i would start at 12 o'clock 12 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 1 2 3 15 eggs in that pot and I would know it, how they went in. And then I would, in turn, go take them out in that same order. And I would take them out of the liquid and put them right into the ice bath. And I would only cook them halfway. At that point, the whites would still run if you cut into them. We cooked them to where they would just cold. And I would cook enough eggs for the entire day. And I would have a vat of half poached eggs on ice. I would do my muffins just like this. And I'd have them preset. I would toast my muffins, put my ham on. If we were doing a funky one, it would look just like this. I would have them done for the entire day. When I got a call, because it was a it was an old school brunch where it was a buffet, people could take 20 if they wanted at a time. So when I got a call for Eggs Benedict, I made 15 at a time. So my pan would have 15 in there. I would take these. I would walk over to the vat of eggs, put one egg on top of each one, and throw it in the oven. Soon as those whites were set and the yellow wasn't, I would take it out, top it with hollandaise, and garnish it, and send it out for lunch. And we would do that all day so i would poach all of the eggs bright and early so that i didn't have to do it for the rest of the day so when you say am i going to swirl the water yeah not so much because there's no way i'm going to be able to swirl the water and drop one egg in 
1,800 times. I don't know what the hell my dogs are fighting about, but it's it sounds good. Ooh, that one looks like a proverbial golf ball. I lost the white on that one. So when you overcook a poached egg, we used to call it a golf ball because it was about as hard as a golf ball. And if I ever, my boss would come by every now and again and he'd stick his hand, he'd stick his hand in and grab an egg. <laughs> And if he got a golf ball, let me tell you, that thing came flying through the kitchen right at me. <laughs> Definitely not fun. Little Benny's for two right here. I see a lot of places will dress their bennies like this. Not a fan. Not a fan. I like the contrast in color. So I like to just kind of do a nice little line. So you get that contrast. It is going to fall. Somebody just fired up their barbecue in the neighborhood. And the only reason I know it is because I smell the lighter fluid. <laughs> fucking shit. Fucking dumb, man. All right, man. So, super duper yummy right there. We got our potatoes O'Brien, our eggs Benny. And uh, we did a little different version. We got the uh, barbecue eggs, Benny. And now I'm going to fly and show you one more quick dish. One more quick dish. So I got my cast iron skillet. We're going to fly through this, homies. Stay with us. Stay with us. Watch me create another plate here. Look at that, there's my plate. So we've got our mahi mahi. Skin off, dried off, ready to rock and roll. I've got this on blaze, I got it full on. We got our voodoo black. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna end my little, there's that wind again, in my little uh, boat, I'm going to add about a quarter inch voodoo black. Now, when I was coming up, you know what? Let me, let me address that real quick. I don't know if you saw when I poured the black into the container here, I got some lumps come out. Um, you know, I'm trying to pick one up so I can show it to you, but I can't because the minute you touch them, they break. Everybody says, oh my God, you need to like, your stuff clumps up. It does. It does. If you have somebody's stuff who isn't clumping up, when you try to pour it out, call them up and tell them to put more stuff in their bottle. That's the problem. We pack these as full as we can. Even when we got to put stuff in there, we go like this, let it shrink down, and we add more seasoning to it. When it comes out, touch those little lumps that you call them. They break right apart. That is us trying to give you as much as we can for your money. I'm going to take some of my clarified butter. Remember, higher smoke point. I don't need a whole bunch. 
Matter of fact, all right, here we go. Black and mahi mahi. We're going to take our mahi. I got this on medium high. Take your mahi. Dredge it in that blackening seasoning. So often today, I'll go out and order a black in something, and yeah. they go like this, like it's like it's you know, salt. Like you're gonna kill me. I want the flavor of that blackening. We dredge these up hard and heavy. Get them on that hot pan. Not too hot, like when we did the salmon, because mahi we got to cook all the way through. So we want the sear. But we want to make sure that we're going to be able to take this all the way through and get a fully cooked mahi mahi. All right. Very important. After working with the blackening, wash your hands. Wash your hands. I have my sandy towels out here today for my hands. You could very easily get those to keep in your kitchen. Uh, they're meant for when you don't have a hand sink uh, to ensure safety does not replace Washing your hands. Nothing replaces that, guys. All right, here we go. Can't use this as the pan. Add raw fish on it. <coughs> wow. I'm telling you, if anybody's around my house, I hope this is drowning out the smell of that, that, uh, Lighter fluid, because my God. All right, so guys, we're going to make these, this mahi-mahi dish. We're going to plate one like it would be on a plate. So we're going to put our little nice half cup of potatoes down for our starch. That mahi's coming good. <clears throat> what I'm looking for, I don't know if you, I keep coming back to look. I'm watching the heat travel up the side of the fish, and you could see that happen. Um, once we flip this, I'm going to add a little bit of our garlic butter on top and just let it set and rest because uh, we're going to go right to part two immediately. And this is a great brunch idea. If you have properly meased, you have your potatoes cooked and held warm, uh, you could jump in the kitchen and, I mean, we could do this mahi in advance too halfway and get this ready to rock and roll and serve this for brunch too. Now, I'm watching this piece of fish right here closest to me. Uh, that, that, it's changing color up the side of the fish, which is a great indicator and a good thing to look for. Remember, we got to use all our senses when we're cooking. Look at that. I got my fish spat out. Oh, oh man. I don't know how many of you have heard the story. One of my life-changing food moments was with a piece of blackened fish. So uh, I take, take, take a little bit of extra excitement or whatever. I look at this a little different than I do uh, those smash burgers that we do quite often. Get a clean spoon. Watch this. Now, if you want to add a little something different, you can take this, this basic Voodoo Chef garlic butter recipe we have, and you can add lime and avocado right to this to create an avocado lime butter that is just like insane. And it plays so nice on this. And you can see this butter is just melting right over this fish all on its own from that carryover cook. Now, one of two things. Take this, throw it in the oven, and hold it in the oven with the potatoes. Or let it finish cooking right here on the top, yeah? But either way... We're still not complete because we've only got a protein 
and a starch. We talked about blanche earlier. Blanche is a great technique with vegetables. I don't have a lot of time to cook. You saw me earlier. I set up my pot. I put my vegetables into Blanche. I took them out. I sat around. I've got some asparagus here. I think I have a total of six asparagus. And you can see I cut the heads off, right? I'm going to take these heads and I'm going to set them right here in this water. And I'm going to let these blanch off real quick. With the rest of the stock, what I did, I cut it on a real hard bias, real thin. Um, just took my knife as hard as I could and cut them, as, cut them thin. I didn't waste any part of that asparagus. But I did keep that head nice and pretty because I want to use that for a garnish. So I'm going to get those blanched off real quick. If you're looking, you can already see them attaining that bright, vibrant color that we look for with the blanch, right? If you look close, you can see the mosquitoes from Jumanji making a guest appearance. <laughs> all right, look how quick, guys. Done. We're going to rest these. I'm going to take all the rest of my asparagus and drop it in. And it's right here in this water, which is going to evaporate rather quickly. Now, you saw it steaming a couple seconds ago. And you saw once I put the asparagus in, all the steam went away. We changed the temperature of the water by adding the asparagus. It came right back up to temp. I do this same technique with full asparagus, with broccoli. Uh, I hate to admit cauliflower. I hate cauliflower. But look. You see the blanch already taking place. You see the color already changing. I'm cooking dinner. I'm not cooking at the restaurant now. So once we get this to that, that bite point that we're looking for in industry, hey, got an extra top in there. In industry, we might ice bath this. Me, I'm going right to my sink and I'm getting rid of that water. I'm going right back to the fire. Going right up on high. Add my garlic butter. My voodoo dust. Putting the finishing touch on my asparagus. I like tomatoes. Are those really tomatoes? Uh huh. <laughs> so I cut them in sixths. That's a hard word to say. I cut I cut the tomatoes in six pieces. <laughs> <laughs> then I took out the meat and I cut them on a hard bias. I just toss it in here. Test for doneness. He's good. <laughs> you wish you were here, homie. I do. <laughs> All right. Nice piece of mahi mahi. Right on top. Our 512 Margarita Hollandaise. Notice I still let that fish shine through. And then use those pretty pieces for that top. And I hope you can see that right there. Guys, little blackened mahi-mahi over Potatoes O'Brien. 
with uh, tomato and asparagus. Guys, so simple, so easy, so quick. Uh, I hope you try these on for size. I appreciate you hanging out. Uh, I think technically we went over by a minute and 52 seconds. <laughs> not bad at but, all. Uh, not bad at all. I hope you guys had a great time. Until next time, guys, we will uh, check you soon. And uh, until then, much love. Mm -hmm.